they begin to murmur and they begin to gripe and complain and say that Jesus sits with the sinners and tax collectors, that he receives sinners. What a thought is that this morning, that Jesus Christ receives the sinners, that he receives the lowly and the outcasts and all of the rejects that the Pharisees wouldn't want to touch. Now, I've got to understand, you've got to help, help you to understand this morning that oftentimes when we look at these three parables, the parable, what do we call them? The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost or prodigal son. And we have misnamed these three parables because if I get, when I get through with this message this morning, and especially when I get through with the series, I am praying that you will find out that Jesus did not tell these parables to illustrate the point of their lostness. He told these parables to illustrate the grace of God Almighty that he would be willing to find that which was lost. And we can sing that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I, I was blind, but now I see. It is not the lostness in the stories of these parables that you need to understand. It is the fact that God, the demonstration of God's grace to find that which was lost. Jesus faces the objection of Pharisaic Judaism in every point. He faces this, this, this particular issue, and that is, does God really love sinners, or does he just love the good people? Does he love sinners? Does he really love the outcasts, the rejects, the mess-ups, the, the bums on the street, the alcoholics, or all kinds of, or does he just love the good people that are found doing good deeds and they are good, moral, and upright people? After all, that's what the Pharisees would say is that I have, I've earned a right into heaven because I'm a good, moral person. Does God really, and see, the, the Judaism of that day had become so encrusted and so crusted that the Jews believed that God only loved Israel and that God only loved the Jewish people, the good people of that day, the ones who practiced the law. God could never love the outcast or the prostitute or, or the one who was a reject. But here Jesus tells the parable, and I wish I could have somebody to testify this morning that God does love the outcast and he does love the reject and he does love the one that was born on the wrong side of the track and he does love the one that was born into all kinds of mess ups and hang ups in fact we were all born with mess ups and hang ups because we were all born in sin so here is the answer wrapped up in these three portraits of grace. And here is the thing that we need to understand this morning with this parable. Not the parable of the lost sheep, but the parable of the shepherd of grace. The parable of the shepherd of grace. First of all, first of all, I want to give you a rough understanding of what grace is. Noel Brooks says that divine grace is the only moving or originating cause of our salvation. The death of Christ is the only meritorious cause. Man can neither originate his salvation nor can he merit it. In other words, it is the grace of God that originates our salvation. It is the grace of God that woos us and calls us and draws us into his presence. It is the grace of God and without his grace I have nothing in my life. I need the grace of God. Wesley will call it a provenient grace. In other words, it is a grace that God gives while we are stupid and lost in sin. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? That while you were lost in sin, that while you were messed up, God kept his hand upon you and gave you provenient grace. You could have died in sin. You could have died in the car wreck. You could have died in the accident. Somebody could have come along. You could have had the heart attack while you were serving the devil. But God's provenient grace kept his hand upon you 
so that you didn't die. And God's prevenient grace drew you and convicted you and pulled you into his kingdom in a mighty and an awesome way. God's grace saves because he wants to save. God's grace, God longs to reach out. He is the originating cause, the, the first cause of salvation. It is not that I found him because God was never lost. Yeah, come on, S somebody has heard the cry before. Oh, I found the Lord, I found the Lord. You know, oh, bless God. I didn't know that the Lord was lost. Amen. Amen. I didn't know God was missing anywhere. I thought as the old chorus says, he was there all the time waiting patiently in line. He was, he was there all the time. God was not lost. God sought me out and he found me out in his grace, found me out. God longs to find out the sinner again. The, the great hymn says, I was once lost, but now I'm found. Amen. I'm found by the grace of God Almighty. The cross of Christ is the only way that I merit his salvation. I can't have a big enough bank account. I can't look good enough. I can't buy him off. I can't pay him off. I can't give him all of my worldly goods or possessions. None of that works. It is only through the cross of Christ that I earn salvation. What I mean by earn salvation is that I receive what Christ did upon the cross. And that is how I am saved. He's already, if people knew how easy it was to get saved, I think we'd have more people getting saved because all I've got to do is receive what Christ has done on the cross. It's simple grace. It is simple mercy. It's simple love, if you will. One person said, to show grace is to extend favor or kindness to one who doesn't deserve it and can never earn it. I could never have earned my place in the kingdom of God. You could have never earned your place in the kingdom of heaven. You could have never earned your place among God's chosen people. You could have never earned that, but it is the grace of God that gives us the strength and the ability to come into the kingdom of God that we believed on him because God gave us his grace I can't earn it I didn't deserve it but grace has given it to me listen to what one definition says justice and we like justice we like justice in fact it's difficult for me to preach this message and the messages that deal with grace because I like justice. I told you before and I made confession before I like watching Matlock and I like watching some of those law, law shows because of the fact that justice is served. And man, when justice is served, it's like, all right, yes, God. I mean, you know, it, it's just an awesome thing because we are people. I mean, how many of us in this place this morning, if we were offended, would we not want justice served? upon the offendee or the person that is offending us. I mean, we want justice to be served. Justice is getting what we deserve. Mercy is being spared what we deserve. It is the mercy of God. We deserve hell. Don't ever go up to God and say, God, give me what I deserve because we deserve hell. We deserve judgment. We deserve condemnation. But mercy is being spared what we deserve. But grace is grace, grace. Grace is being given what we do not deserve. And that is that grace gives us heaven and grace gives us eternal life and grace gives us a life in Jesus Christ. And, and a lot of us in this place, and I don't know how long everybody has been saved in here, but you could, you, you need, we need to be careful. And I'm saying we because myself as well. We need to be careful because of the fact that we can become just as pharisaical as the Jews were in that day. And we can be crusted and we can say, well, you know, we, they need justice. They need justice no they need the grace and the mercy of God Almighty God didn't give you justice he gave you grace it is a rough understanding of grace justice is getting what we deserve mercy is being spared what we deserve but grace is being given what we do not deserve grace is a gift folks he's a gift 
It is a gift of God. Grace is a gift of God. But watch this. There is a resistance to grace. There is a resistance to grace. Number one, there is a resistance.